plus draw for Jerry Fit. And remember, Davis is the short stack here, so Fit is putting pressure on the man. All in. All in. I call. Call? Instant call. Take out the gentleman. It, the all-in move really only was like a double raise. Jerry Fit was pot committed, and he's getting a good price. He's looking for a spade. And he gets it. Yes, he did. And that's going to be it. So Davis is done dancing here in this particular event. Aaron Davis will uh, walk at the expense of Jerry Fit, who's put a number of players out, incidentally. Fit playing very solid right now and playing against some of the best players in the world. A little bonus coverage now. John Jawanda, another one of the great players against Simon Cleal. Both have jacks, but Cleal has the boss kicker right here. Jawanda's going to need an eight. He gets it. Well, John Jawanda. Be lucky if you, if you need be, and he certainly was. Jawanda is now a familiar face on the world poker scene. We can't quite call this home field for him, but his birth country is Indonesia, just a wee bit north of here. Back to our main table where uh, Nick Galanis <laughs> says, wow, when he looks across the table at some of the great players in the world. Another new player, Bernard Martinelli. He's got 44,700 in chips. And both these players joining this gauntlet of a table are pretty juicy targets. They're both fairly short stacked. And, you know, the guys with three, four hundred thousand look at somebody with 50,000 and say, that's the guy I want to tangle with. And these are some tough guys to tangle with. These two players who are left in this hand particularly. Five, six, three. So Ivy catches a pair of sixes. Cool. And a five. Oh, 10,000 is the bet from Fit. Playing limit poker here. Cool. Ivy calls the 10,000. One card remaining. It's a three. Now it's going to come down to the betting. 20,000. 20,000 Fit bets into Ivy. 20,000. And every card after the flop had to make Phil Ivey feel even better about his meager pair of sixes with a jack kicker. I think Phil Ivey knows here either he has got a winner or he's absolutely buried. This is not really one of these close hands. Like, hmm, cool. sure. maybe he's yeah, got me. He's he makes find a great out. call He's going to find out that his sixes are good enough. So Phil Ivey wins another hand. Has there been a hand that he's played that he's lost? Not to my recollection. Phil Ivey will take uh, the big chip lead here as uh, he continues to play magnificent poker and uh, he now has just about 85,000 more than Kenneth James and Jerry Fitt at 272,000. Martinelli, Galanis, and Karen's short stack. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Crown Casino. We are in Melbourne, Australia. Barry Tompkins, Michael Koenig alongside this is Aussie millions and literally millions at stake for these players. Down to just about 100 players left in this event now. And an elite table that we're watching. Yeah, we started with more than 400 entrants and we're down to the last quarter of the field. And about half of these people will make the prize money. So tension is starting to build. All right. Price. It's going to raise here to 18,000. That's a rather large raise, Barry. The blinds are 1 in 2,000. The typical raise would be to like 6 or 7,000. Not sure why Jerry Fit wanted to raise so much. He might feel a little uncomfortable with that ace jack and just wants to end the proceedings right here. And, you know, Kenneth James with a jack 10, he's not really getting a very good price to call that much. But I think he might also sense that his opponent doesn't have a lot of comfort with his hand. But he does call. Try to make an honest man out of Jerry Fit. And James catches a pair here. Check. And checks. And Fit bets 20,000 into James. See if that scares him off. Not at all. Not for an instant. 
Now the turn of queen on the turn. That's a real good card for Kenna James. You know, either he was beat on the flop, his opponent already had his pair of tens beat, or that queen did nothing. Check. Check. Fit checks. As does James, a seven on the river. I think James might be suspecting now his two pair is, in fact, the best hand, and he might want a value bet here. He's going to go after him. Yeah, and he bets about half the pot. That That's a reasonable value bet. That And the beauty of that bet, Barry, is if Kenneth James gets re-raised here, he can get away from this hand. And, wow, Jerry Fitt folds the ace-jack, and, and James, I think, knew all along he had the best hand. But deep down, he's pretty happy that he didn't get called there. He'd rather just take down the pot. That's the first hand I can remember Jerry Fitt playing, I don't want to use the word carelessly, but at least somewhat carelessly. And his once mighty chip stack is starting to dwindle a bit. Ace Little from Fitt. He's first to act. And he needs to fold here. All right. Right. But what do I know? <laughs> well, there you are. He's going to raise. 8,000. 8,000. And my hypothesis is that Jerry Fitt might be a little bit on tilt right now. You look at what James has here. A pair of kings. It's just a question of how he plays this. See I if raise. he can real fit in two, right, two times in a row. He's going to raise. Fit in early position. Made a standard raise to 8,000. James... That's another 40,000. So it's 48,000 total. Nobody else is going to want to play unless they look down and find a big hand. No. Jerry Fitt can't call. When the action gets back around to him, he cannot call an additional 40,000 with an ace three. And that's one of the reasons why you don't want to play that kind of hand in early position. You haven't got your hat on. You haven't got your hat on, he says to Kenna James. Now James, of course, will put it on. There you go. Onus is still on Jerry Fit, And I think his decision has been made already. He just wants to see the two different looks of Kenna James. Chapeau and no. I think it's looking pretty much the same to him. <laughs> he throws it away. So Kenna James has taken advantage of uh, Jerry Fit, has not blinked on two successive hands and Kenna James will uh, eat into that chip stack of Jerry Fit. <laughs> Tough way to make a living. <laughs> Very hard. <laughs> well it's been easy money for him the last two hands. We got a lot more poker to play here in Melbourne and we're coming back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to PartyPoker.com Aussie Millions. We're at the Crown Casino here in Melbourne, Australia. Kind of James, back-to-back -back winner before we went away to break. Phil Ivey, get rid of that Jack-5. James, a 10-4 suited. 65. 65. I'm going to have 6,500. Enough to get Liebert out. Well, let's see what Martinelli does with this ace-10. We haven't seen Mr. Martinelli get involved in any hand yet. And the streak continues. Still won't. That's right. Cairns won't play either. Galanis gets out of the way. Well, Fit has been the guy who has uh, stared James down to no avail. And he will again. And he's the favorite right now. 6-7-8 on the flop. Check. What Kenna James has going for him, though, is position. And in No Limit Hold'em, that is a mighty attribute to have, getting to go last. Little pair for James on the turn. Check. And the river is a seven. So James with his two pair. Check from Fit. Token bet, 10,000. That bet surprises me, Barry, because... I don't think Kenna James gets called there unless he's beaten. 
in this case he wasn't so he doesn't